Okay. And then I want to talk about, I want to talk about one thing just to plant a seed, probably two things. And I'm going to move very quickly through this, Dan. So I'll just kind of yell at you as we go. Um, but I think as a business owner, you know, you know, right now what we're doing in these courses is trying to get some introduction to AI, trying to get everybody very used to used to these concepts, understanding the tools and understanding the limitations. I think as a business owner, what I start asking myself is, is what's next? So where do we go from here? We've got, we're using chat GPT. That's awesome. How, how deeply do we want to integrate this into our company? And there are really three layers of, of integration in terms of how you adopt these AI tools. Um, the first layer, and you can hit the next slide, Dan, is where you should start, which this is use existing tools. This is what we've been talking about this whole time. Use chat GPT, check out Opus, use Bing's AI tool, make sure that you're getting familiar with these tools and starting to use them in your practices. Because if you do that, you have some immediate value add. The, the important thing for you as a business owner is to make sure you know what these things are capable of and you know how they fit into your workflows. So I can't stress enough that everybody should be starting here. And I think that's largely where we are. There is also a, a no man's land here, which is if you're you should never try to build AI technology unless you're sitting on $200 million in a team of 30 plus data scientists and machine learning researchers. You do not want to be competing with Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, Amazon, NVIDIA, et cetera, to actually build your own language model. But there is a middle ground here that when, when I go to bed at night, this is what I think about, which is how do you incorporate this AI into your automation? And so there are a set of tools and things that allow you to interact with things like GPT as part of an automated workflow. And you can see those at a code level, but there are also some tools that do that at a no code level. And these are things like when you hear Microsoft talking about semantic kernel, these are the types of tools that people are using to not just use chat GPT, but to automate it in a string of workflows that you're doing with in your company. Um, so before you go to this level, you've got to be ready. And, and Nicole is like an expert at making you ready. You have to know what kind of prompts you're going to be using. All this prompt engineering we're doing, you have to get right. You also have to know your data sources. Are you going to feed in information from your website, your company database, PDFs, the internet? And you also have to define your workflow. This is something that starts hitting you in the face when you start realizing, oh, in order to do this task, I've got to know I need to do A and then B and then C and then D. And then finally, you've got to know where humans absolutely need to be involved. Like before this blog goes up on my website, we definitely need to send this to our marketing manager or our copy editor. And so this is what that looks like. You know, you're, you're a human or someone on your team, a high knowledge skill worker is getting information from the world, from your coworkers, from your business data, et cetera, interfacing with these tools, whether it's chat GPT or chat base or Opus, kind of iterating and fighting the machine until you can get some good results and then going and using that out in your company, posting it to your website, emails, et cetera. What this starts to look like once you really firm up that process and you get very good at doing that is you eventually don't necessarily want humans in the middle of all of that interaction. And you want to be able to code things that are going to help you do that in an automated fashion. Um, so, so the next level of this is this is what essentially something like chat base or some of these more sophisticated tools are doing. They're using automation and robots to not only interface with you or your employees, but also to go get data from the internet or get data from your company information, feed it into these prompt templates, interact with all sorts of different kinds of language models, and then get that data back and go act in the world. So an example could be what Nicole was sharing with some of these tools she's using where you, excuse me, upload a PDF, and then you can chat with it. These are the kind of tools that are sort of the next wave once you get really master that kind of fundamental first level of using these tools that allow you to really take this and automate it and, and really multiply the benefits of this. And it's a, it's a somewhat complicated process. You're not going to do it by yourself. You will need someone on your team or a consultant to be an engineer and help you build this. But it does unlock the, the next level of automation and how you can incorporate these cool things into really cool automated workflows. Um, where it starts to get really crazy is... The way these AIs work is language models work very often like an agent. And so what you're seeing in the most sophisticated forms of adoption is that people are not only writing their own custom agents that can do a one particular task well, like write a blog or post to LinkedIn, but they're also creating robots that then orchestrate and manage 
all of those other robots. And you see some of this with tools like AutoGPT, but these are scenarios where you can give your AI a very high level task. Like I just want to do market research for my book. And then you also enable that AI to do that task by giving it access to a ton of other tools. In fact, GPT-4 is recently releasing via their API a way for you to give GPT your own custom functionality where it can orchestrate these different robots to do it for you. And this is where things start getting very weird because you're starting to not only replace task level automation, but you're actually replacing kind of objective level automation where these AIs can use other AIs to get that task done and monitor quality and then go act on the world. And I think this is a little bit where some of the doomsday scenarios start to come in. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, that, if that boss robot has his finger on the nuclear button, uh, that could be a bad for, for the world. Absolutely. Um, and so I think, so just one example use case, and this is something we use in our business is, is if you've got, if you've got a developer or a consultant that can help you build these things, you know, there's still a role in the, for humans in all of this process. So, so in our company, what we did is we essentially had one of our Python developers set up some of these systems using some of these mid-level tools. They still interacted with tools like GPT-4, but via their APIs and they interacted with our company database and our website. And essentially they, they trained a series of robots to work with each other and hand off data to go from doing very basic level research, like looking at Google and Twitter for any new mentions of trending AI tools, and then to pull that information down, have a separate robot summarize it, hand it to another robot to create a LinkedIn post, hand it to another robot to create a relevant image for the LinkedIn post, and then finally, to be able to post and, and that on LinkedIn and notify people in Slack to go help promote it. What we found is it didn't work well if we'd let the robots do it by themselves. At the end of that chain, we still wanted a human and needed a human to intervene with that process. So now our developer maintains a system like this, but then our marketer can just sit there and receive a queue of posts that are relevant and have citations based on this trending information that they can then edit or approve. And for us, this cuts out a ton of work in the process that used to be humans, where we can chain all of these AI tools together to achieve some really cool outcomes. And I think one of the things that is important to me, and we can go, you can go to the two next slides. Yeah, but, but before you do that, um, you know, Jeff is a little modest, but this is what Jeff's company does. Uh, this yellow is where Jeff's company's consulting lives, and he's the best in the business. Uh, we use him for this for our company. Um, you know, I know how to use the existing tools, but I don't have the team or the smarts to do that AI enhanced automation. And that's where consultant firms like Saltbox really come in. Uh, you know, this is sort of the world I live in. This is the world that Jeff helps his companies live in. And that that is definitely just the SMB space. If you're ready to take this to the next level, Rather than building your own custom tools, you know, work with a firm like Saltbox to help you get there so that you can build something like this. And they might even have some out of the box, you know, boss and worker uh, uh, algorithms that they can leverage to allow you to get things done in an efficient way. Mm -hmm. You're essentially building almost like custom software. 